This next video um, is going to cover chapter 3 of the book. So for those that are new, um, all the information found in in these um, PowerPoints comes straight from the ACSM resources for the Exercise Physiologist book. Um, so a great um, learning task that you might want to do is follow along in the book here. Um, if you have that available to you. So we'll get started. First of all, I just want to say um, be sure that you're familiar with all the anatomy and physiology um, of the cardiovascular system and the respiratory system. Um, the way I present this information, I'm going to assume that um, you already are fairly familiar with these two systems. So let's jump into chapter 3. Our objectives for chapter 3 are going to be cardiorespiratory response to acute graded exercise, selecting appropriate cardiorespiratory fitness assessments for healthy populations, and then we'll finally go over the um, FIT principle. Cardiorespiratory response to acute single intensity exercise. So um, as workload increases, there is a higher demand for oxygen to keep up with the increased demand for ATP. Um, in the next couple slides, we'll look at a few um, definitions and terms here. So steady state, oxygen deficit, and oxygen debt. Steady state is defined at, as the point at which VO2 plateaus during submaximal aerobic exercise and energy production via the aerobic energy system is equal to the energy required to perform, to perform the set intensity of work. Oxygen deficit is the anaerobic energy systems are responsible for providing the energy to make up for the difference between the energy produced via the aerobic energy system and the energy required to perform the work. Next, we'll look at oxygen debt. After cessation of exercise, VO2 remains elevated due to the increased work associated with the resynthesis of ATP and creatine phosphate within the cells, lactate removal, and elevated body temperature, hormones, heart rate, and respiratory rate. Next, we'll look at oxygen uptake, response to acute graded exercise. So we'll look at VO2 max in the thick equation. VO2 max is defined as the highest volume of oxygen that the body can consume. This is used as an indicator of aerobic fitness and endurance exercise performance due to the fact that a higher VO2 max indicates a greater capacity to create ATP via the oxidative energy system. And so our thick equation is VO2 max equals heart rate max times stroke volume max times the arterial venous O2 difference max. The arterial venous oxygen difference response to acute graded exercise. So this is the difference in oxygen content between arterial and venous blood. So resting oxygen content is approximately 20 milliliters per deciliter in the arterial blood and 15 milliliters per deciliter in venous blood. And so during exercise, venous oxygen content decreases, um, which causes a higher demand for oxygen consumption. Next, we'll look at heart rate, stroke volume, and cardiac output as a response to acute graded exercise. Heart rate. Um, heart rate increases linearly with increasing workload and it increases that way until max heart rate is reached and trained individuals tend to have lower resting heart rates stroke volume this is defined as the volume of blood the heart ejects with each beat stroke volume increases with workload only up until around 40 to 60 percent of vo2 max and then anything after about 60 percent vo2 max it decreases slightly and as stroke volume increases during training, heart rate decreases. Cardiac output is the product of stroke volume and heart rate and is also a measure of blood pump per minute. And during graded exercise, cardiac output increases steadily. 
Next we'll look at the blood pressure response to graded intensity exercise. So during dynamic large muscle exercise, vascular beds in the muscle vasodilate and resistance within the blood vessel decreases. Total peripheral, peripheral resistance, or TPR, is the overall resistance to blood flow by the blood vessels. TPR is determined by the systemic resistance through the entire vasculature. And during graded exercise, TPR may drop slightly due to the large muscle vasodilation. Mean arterial pressure, or MAP, is the average blood pressure in the arterial system over one complete cardiac cycle. As a result of exercise, systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, and mean arterial pressure all decrease slightly. So let's look a little bit deeper at total peripheral resistance. So again, this is the overall resistance to blood flow by the blood vessel and is determined by the systemic resistance throughout the entire vasculature. So therefore, TPR is the proportion of the vasculature that has undergone vasodilation versus vasoconstriction during exercise. And mean arterial pressure, again, which is the average blood pressure in the arterial system over one complete cardiac cycle. A nice little um, equation for MAP is dis diastolic blood pressure plus 0.33 times systolic blood pressure minus diastolic blood pressure. Next we'll move on to selecting appropriate cardiorespiratory fitness assessments for healthy populations. So some of the benefits here are going to include um, in clinical populations, cardiorespiratory fitness testing is used to screen and diagnose medical conditions. It can help with programming intensity, duration, mode of exercise, among many other things. And it can be used as a motivational tool to help show progress and continually set goals. So there are a few types of tests um, that we can um, cover for healthy populations. So first is going to be the VO2 max test. This is a gold standard test. Um, it's open circuit spirometry during graded exercise to volitional fatigue. Um, a submaximal VO2 is going to estimate VO2 max from the heart rate response to submaximal single stage or graded exercise. A step test, these are typically short in duration and require little equipment. So, and intensity of these tests are determined by the step height and step speed. Most step tests predict VO2 max from, from recovery heart rate. And lower heart rates during exercise and greater rate of recovery equals a higher estimated VO2 max. Next we have field tests. So the most common field tests assess the amount of time it takes to cover a certain distance. So some of these include walking or cycling, um, swimming, things like that. And then so when we're selecting the appropriate assessment, there's a few things we need to consider, such as intensity, length of the test, expense of the test, type and number of personnel needed, equipment and facilities needed, if phys physician supervision is needed, um, and safety concerns that go along with the test, required accuracy and results, appropriateness of the mode of exercise, and the willingness of the participant to perform the test. Lastly, we'll look at the FIT principle. Um, as it pertains to selecting appropriate tests for healthy populations. So we have frequency. This is going to be moderate intensity exercise done at least five days per week. Um, intensity, again, a combination of vigorous and moderate intensities is usually the best. Time, roughly 150 minutes of moderate intensity or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity or a healthy combination of both. Type is going to be rhythmic, continuous exercise that involves all of the major muscle groups. Volume, the product of frequency, intensity, and time. The targets here are about 500 to 1,000 minutes per week, or roughly 1,000 kcals per week. And progression, this includes um, increasing any one of the fit components gradually. Um, 
So you can increase exercise time and duration by about five to ten minutes every one to two weeks. That's generally the the um, gold standard there for um, increasing duration and time. And then progressive overload, um, which is defined as the individual must exercise at a level greater than they are accustomed to. Thank you for watching this video. Chapters 4, 5, 6, and 7 will be in the next video.